Hey guys, what's going on? Jim here again bringing another tutorial with the uh, BE6K small in mind. Uh, today we're looking at um, call flow and the security that goes along with that. And in case you're brand new to Cisco Voice, it will be an awesome little uh, tutorial for you to see all the different things. Um, in a previous tutorial, we set up calling search spaces and partitions. I just wanted to point out in the partition sections we have this restricted partition and this inbound partition. Also going towards our system devices is our main DN partition. All right, And then if we go over to the calling search spaces, you can see we have an inbound calling search space and our main calling search space and a line calling search space within the line is our restricted. That's very important for call flow security. In our inbound calling search space, all we have is our inbound partition. So first things first, let's go ahead and set up a uh, gateway device. In this case, we're gonna have a SIP gateway to connect, that's gonna be our medium to the PSDN. So we're gonna go ahead and set up a uh, SIP gateway from call manager to the gateway. So we'll have SIP to SIP. So let's go over here to trunk, add new, and we're going to do SIP trunk, continue, no security there. Our device name put in our standard device pool there and our media resource group list. All this was done in previous tutorials. Now very important here is our inbound call flow and we're going to use our inbound calling search space which only goes to the inbound partition. And outbound calls pretty much leave that as it is, put some redirectings in there. And then of course we need to add our oops, gateway and our SIP trunk profile. And we can change settings within the SIP profiles if need be. Um, DTMF, let's do 2833. And we'll save that up. So now we have our gateway device there configured. I'm going to get rid of my face so there's more room on the screen. And we're going to go in and start explaining um, some call flow security. And this is going to be for outbound. So basically, we're going to have a device, a phone, a soft phone, whatever, and it's going to have a line calling search space and a device calling search space. So if we actually go over, I have a couple route points here. We go over to our, like this will be a line that we would see in a device, and it has a calling search space on the actual line itself, and those are going to get the line calling search space which only has the restricted partition within it. If we go back at the device level, it has a different calling search space that you can put, so you can have a calling search space for the line and the device. The line has preference. Uh, so you have an ordered list of the partitions in your line calling search space. After that, it will truncate into the device calling search space and have an ordered list there. So from top to bottom, you have your line, in your device. So in our line device calling search space, we're going to have the restricted partition. What we're going to do with that, we're just going to go over here to a translation pattern. And we'll create a new one and we're going to do we're going to use nine to get out. So we're going to do nine dot at here. Okay. And we're going to put it in that restricted partition. And this is going to be for known malicious numbers and there's different links out there you can find to populate these lists uh, this is going to be restricted um, us other 
and we need to put it in a numbering plan so that it will allow route filters. And I've already uploaded all my route filters through the bulk admin uh, import tool. <coughs> so we're going to put these other US and um, we are going to set this to block. And we could choose what kind of uh, error message it gets. And as long as this is blocked, if phone goes off hook, it dies 9 and then a known bad number that's in one of these route filters, it will block it. So we'll save that. We have a couple more to do here. Again, these are in the restricted partition. Has to be in the North American numbering plan. And this is special purpose, and we want to block it. And we're going to use an unallocated number to get it busy. One more of these. And restricted partition. It's going to be the Caribbean, which is the well-known malicious numbers. And block it. All right. So in this case, if one of the, and we could go actually go over here to the route filters. And you can see all these different area codes of known malicious numbers. Okay. And if we dial one of those from a line has the line calling search space that has the restricted partition in it. If one of those numbers match, it's going to go to a busy signal as we have set it. If it doesn't match one of those, it will continue down and look at the regular device calling search space, which on a regular device will have our normal calling search space or a jabber calling search space. And in these guys, in this normal calling search space, we have access to PSDN. Okay? So that's how we get out. As long as it doesn't match a known bad number, and you can do other forms of call blocking, you know, if you add to those route filters, then that's a way to do, provide outbound security. Uh, we're actually going to add one more translation pattern, um, ILOD. It's actually a route pattern. And this is going to be for toll-free numbers because I also have a route filter for that but this is going to be in the PSTN toll-free partition so this will be allowed and it's a route pattern so this is just going in the normal um, where's my route? there we go toll-free uh, route filter and we'll we can send it straight to this SIP device but I'm actually going to create a hunt list or a, a route list and a route pattern um, for those so we'll go ahead and set it for this guy right now so we can save it And we're going to go back over here to our route group. We're going to add in no, that's because I used it on the My mouse is going crazy today. So let's actually delete this out. Do this the correct way. Add our SIP gateway as a route group. So if we add other devices in here later, it will be easier to have an ordered list of gateways. So let's go back here. There is our route group. 
is pointing to our gate, our SIP gateway that we configured. Let's do our route list. And add our route group to it. Oops. And we can also add in special calling masks and prefixes here if we need to. That would be a good place to add, you know, seven digits. And now we can go back to our route pattern, add in our toll free. route filter there. Now we can add in our PST and route list. So it would be easy to go into this route list later and add uh, redundant gateways. Um, and I'm actually not going to do any stripping at this level. I'm actually going to do it on my SIP gateway. So it's a little bit easier dealing with SRST calls. Alright, so that's that. Now we can add um, some more route groups here, route patterns, I guess that's what I'd say, uh, to, for outbound calling. So we can have our 9-1, this is the pattern I usually use, this will be in the long distance pattern, uh, partition. Oops, I hit the totally the wrong description. This is a long distance. And it will be using our PSTN route list. And I'm not going to do any digit stripping. Go ahead and add a new with our regular 10 digit. Same route list, no digit stripping. And we're going to go ahead and add in our 911, and I'm going to go ahead and provide for 9, 9 and 911. This will go on our emergency partition. And it's still going to go at the same gateway as of right now. So just like that, we have pretty much <coughs> set up for our outbound calls. We can go ahead and put in here for um, international. And we're going to block it by default, but it'll be here ready in case we need to do or allow international calls. And I'm going to quickly add another one here uh, with termination. Uh, so this will be an international call with the pound key for termination. The first one would just wait for the uh, initial digit timeout, which is in call manager, I believe, five seconds. Might be three. Can't remember right off the top of my head. But we could go to the service parameters since I can't remember off the top of my head we'll just look it up all right so we're looking for let me pull up oh, well, sorry the 302 timer Oh, I was way off. It's defaulted at 15 seconds. Let's move that down to 5. So the T302 timer is the inner digit timeout. So basically the timeout between when you enter your last digit before you're going to have a system error, or in this case the inner digit timeout error. So it was at 15 seconds. So if you were doing an international call without 
um, termination, that last digit would take 15 seconds before it would actually route out, waiting to make sure that, you, that it didn't match another digit. Alright, so we have our route patterns for 911, local long distance, international, and toll free. Along with our security. Now for inbound, um, what we did with this, and it's a trunk, not a gateway, is in the actual SIP trunk, our inbound is looking at this calling search space. So what we could do at this point is in our translation patterns, we could go over here, add an incoming number, whatever it might be. Uh, we'll just say, for example, we're getting uh, a four-digit number. We point it in the inbound partition because otherwise it won't hit this uh, translation. Give it a description. Point it to the correct uh, calling search space going internal. So we can use internal or the actual uh, device calling search space and tell it what internal directory number it needed to dial. So we could say, for example, 555, and it's stripping off the four or whatever. Or if we had full 10 digit dialing. Could strip it down to the internal three digit extension. So that's about it for call flow and call flow security. The main thing to remember here is the line and device calling search spaces and how those interact with each other and what all you could do to provide some extra security. So someone that might be able, you know, you never know what's going on, might uh, have the capability to hack the SIP trunk. Um, they wouldn't just be able to make straight calls internal because it's going to go through this internal partition to begin with. So you don't have direct access inside and also outbound we have the layer security of uh, having to, to go through the route filters and do an initial check before the outbound um, called number can pass out to the SIP trunk. So that's going to do it for today's lesson on uh, route filters and calling search spaces and call flow with security. I'd like for you to subscribe and share and like and all that good stuff.